It's June 23rd, 2018. You wake up on a crisp Sunday morning and open the window to feel the cool spring breeze. You munch on some breakfast. There's no school today, you can take your time. Watch a new upload from your favourite YouTuber, and you switch on your device of choice or circumstance, booting up your favourite game of the past few months, Fortnite. As you load into a new match of Battle Royale, drop in from the Battle Bus and run through the open fields of Dusty Divot, you think about how much fun you're having, how much you love this game, and you can't wait to keep playing it for the rest of your life. Because video games are forever, right? Well, not this one. Fortnite is always changing, and as it does, it becomes less and less like the game you once loved. It's still fun, and you still enjoy it for many years to come, but travel forward, say, six years, and it's so far removed from what it once was that it's barely recognisable anymore. It's a shame you can't go back, right? Even just for a little bit? Well, oh boy, do I have news for you. See, I found out recently that dedicated fans have set up private servers to replay older versions of the game. So, I played four matches of four different seasons, two modern, two classic, to determine if old Fortnite really was better, or if it's just the nostalgia of a simpler worldview speaking. With that, let's get into the 2018 mindset. The least funny imagery you've ever seen is hilarious. Shotgun by George Ezra is the song of the summer, Allier's bass boosted intro is the peak of all peaks. Yeah, you get the picture. Lock in and prepare to have your nostalgia tickled. Roll the intro. First, we'll be jumping into Season 4. This season ran from May to July of 2018, and for many, it's the quintessential OG season. It's actually the first season that I really properly played. I'd been orbiting around the game since the Christmas 2017 event, but it was towards the end of this very season that I truly got hooked. And my personality has never been the same since. Without further ado, Let's get into game number one. Game one was a good old drop into Salty Springs. I can see your toes, little default. I actually spent most of this game readjusting my settings, so we'll, we'll just skip past that, eh? Killed another man in the open streets of Salty Springs, and when I went in for the loot, I was brutally gunned down. Game two, I landed at Anarchy Acres. It got removed pretty early on, and looking back, yeah, I can see why. It's literally just fatal fields, but worse because it's not near any hotspots. Like, bro, this corn doesn't doesn't even give any mats. What a rip. I did get two blue pumps though, and you know what that means. Shout out to the pre-season 5 slurp juices man, they were bad in just so many ways. I didn't meet anyone until all the way down at Greasy Grove when I was shot at from behind. Uh oh, it's a John Wick. He's good. Well, perhaps this fight could have ended differently if I'd landed literally a singular shot on him. Oh well. Game 3, we're headed right into the divot. I think some weapons were a little overtuned back in the day, like I just one shot a guy with a grey tack, but still kind of crazy to me that Hop Rocks have just not come back, like ever. I ended up in Moisty Mire, a location that I genuinely do believe that you must be blinded by nostalgia to say was ever actually good. It did gift me a llama though. Ah, a good old storm chase. Back in the days before any vehicles, a two tick storm was dangerous business. Perched up in the final circle, I saw the last two fighting and I knew I had to take a shot. And I fought bravely, but this Zoe had much better guns. The lack of turbo build left me flustered and in the end, I got outplayed. Enough games. Let's show them how it's done. Brrrrat! Bang! Boosh! Oof! Alright man, you really don't have to take the L on me like that. Where's the report button? With Season 4 done, we skip forward a few months to Season 7. This season means a lot to me. I played it for hours every day, and it was the first time I hit Tier 100 on the Battle Pass. It's just a good season. But that's enough yapping. Let me show you why it's so good. Game 1 was a lazy Lynx drop. I landed right on the clubhouse, naturally. One of the things that kept throwing me off returning to old Fortnite was that you can't just break below a chest to open it. Small quality of life changes like that I do miss. I got my first kill on this OG rare recon expert, followed by this gold trooper. I sniped her in the toe and from there it was a pretty easy one run. I farmed up a little more and then I left. 
Oh no, a John Wick. I got in a couple of cheeky snipes on him, and when we got up close, I dealt some good damage. But there's really only so far you can go on one health. Game 2 was a wailing drop. Wailing Woods really had a character arc in Season 6. It just became a really good drop spot, super underrated. Aww, it gave me dual pistols as a welcome home gift. And if that isn't enough, how about a purple pump? Hey man, uh, how's it, how's it going? Down at Dusty Divot, I sniped this man's builds out and put a divot into his head. I went to what I thought was some safe loot, only for a soccer skin to pounce on me. We spent a while fighting, but the trees made it a lot more difficult to trade shots. I think I prefer my dusty divots treeless. This trap hit me pretty hard and I thought I was done for, but using my gliders I got to a safe position on the low ground and somehow popped a full 15 second chug jug. The storm overtook us, so he ran, and I got the surprise element, resulting in me inevitably getting the kill. I saw this fight going on and, like the good Samaritan that I am, I put an end to it. Final circle, five people left. I'm in a tough spot on this mountain with both of these fellas trying to snipe me. In the end, the storm was to my back and I had to move, but with the extra fall damage, I just didn't make it out. Game three, I'm dropping shifty shafts because shifty shafts is awesome and more people need to appreciate it. After pulling off possibly the first ever effective use of bottle rockets in history, I fought this Omega with a suppressed scar and a dream. Well, they can't all be winners. If I'm ever gonna use this skin, it might as well be now, I guess. Why no, my mother doesn't love me. How could you tell? I landed Container Yard, a personal favorite of mine, but this time I was contested. I was on the hunt for this guy and I'm not sure how, but I somehow entirely didn't notice him right beneath me. Where could he be? Oh dear lord, I killed him. Made my way down to Dusty Divot where I made the mistake of missing this guy. It was a trick shotter. They've really died out over the years, so it's kinda cool to see one out in the wild. Annoying, but cool. Well, that's it for the classic games. The two modern seasons I've chosen are back to back, Chapter 5 Seasons 2 and 3, or Seasons 29 and 30, respectively. Yeah, it really has been 30 seasons, Jesus Christ, we're getting old. Firstly, Chapter 5 Season 2. I'm not gonna lie, I really disliked this season. I just didn't find it very fun at all. All, and I think it encapsulates a lot of the worst aspects of modern Fortnite. Being forced to play it actually partially inspired this endeavour in the first place. Game 1 was a hot bus over classy courts. That's convenient, as it's one of the POIs that really does give me early Fortnite vibes in its layout. Classy Courts is home to an NPC who sells a purple sniper rifle. Using that, I channeled my inner Lee Harvey Oswald and splattered this man's brains. Unfortunately, the CIA found out and I died of natural causes. Game 2 was just as hot as Game 1 and yet I seemed to be completely alone in Classy. This building here doubles as a teddy bear factory. That's cute. One point to modern Fortnite. I was challenged to take a car 500 meters, so I guess I'll show off one of my least favorite modernisms, the vehicle cosmetics. In some countries, this is considered illegal or reckless driving, but I disagree. Piece of cake. While traveling under a bridge, I was attacked by the residing troll, and then I got pumped. Happens all the time. Uh-oh, the rats got out. Someone call pest control! I was attacked by Poseidon himself, but as my college friends say, I'm the one true slurp god. Speaking of slurping, I performed the sloppiest drive-by in history, but was able to make it to the endgame relatively unharmed. I had a pretty good position in the endgame which allowed me to take easy shots at guys trying to reach the circle, and while I was sniped, with brute force I still got the kill. Unfortunately that encounter left me on pretty low health, and after missing both of my shots, I knew this fish was fried. Game 4, I landed right on two golden bananas. This game's been blessed! I'll never understand why you can get a shotgun with a scope on it. It it just doesn't feel right. The train just so happened to be passing by, so I hopped on for a free ride. Using the train, I was able to get a free ticket all the way around the map. The company found out I didn't pay for my ticket and they sent their men after me, but I dealt with it accordingly. I do like the mythical wings item, it's a super fun way of getting around the map, but I guess I need a little more practice. Anyway, that's enough of mids and mortals, I think. The following season was pretty controversial, so to be more fair, I played these games in the ranked mode where the more egregious features were vaulted. Will that exonerate the season? Let's find out. 
For these four games, I switched up my drop to Pleasant Piazza, although it probably wasn't very pleasant for this guy. Now, this is an unranked game, so there were definitely some players of questionable realness here, but I still had some good fights, like against this Heyman. I was way too chuffed with my use of builds and editing in this one. Feels good after all those Season 4 games where I got absolutely demolished. I made my way down to Shipwreck Shallows, where I held a mutiny. Final Circle was closing around Mount Olympus, and while this guy was sort of just standing out in the open, not everyone was handed to me on a silver platter, and in the end, I died. Game 2 was relatively quiet until I set up my Shack of Shame in the end game. Uh, hold on, let me deal with this. There we go. Final circle, and now it's just become a 1 vs 1. Thankfully, I'm on the mountain, and he has to come to me. I just sprayed him down, then pounced on him with the thunder pump for the win. Game 3 starts off with a pretty average kill. I had a good old fashioned stuck in a tree build fight with this guy, and when he tried to run, I gunned him down. Reminds me of Dusty Divot. Rails my way down to Reckless Railways, where I sprayed this guy with my AR, before launching in and breaching his wall with my SMG, only to finish him off with my shotgun. Now that's using the arsenal. Itsy Bitsy Spider got shot in the leg several times by an assault rifle. Replay footage here because I really don't know what happened. Three people left, I'm fighting this guy in the gas station and he dies to the storm, and then I just die. I didn't get shot, I didn't get storm sickness, I just died. Enjoy the win default. Enjoy it. Game 4 is played in zero builds. This mode didn't exist in old Fortnite, so I think it's important to appreciate it too. It's one of the better additions in the modern era. Anyway, Final Circle's looking to be on this here mountain, and my loadout's looking pretty solid. I managed to perch myself in a hotel window, which enabled me to gun down this poor civilian. Final Circle, four people left, and unfortunately, two of them are teamers. I tried my best, I really did, but there were two of them, and one of me. I hate it here. And there we have it, four games from four seasons. So here are the four major things I noted about old Fortnite which I miss. Graphics, I think we all saw this one being first. The art style changes over the years have been a huge point of contention. Personally, I liked a lot of the changes they made over the years. That 2020 art style is probably my favourite look for the game. But what we see in 2024 is very different, and well, I'm not a fan. I liked the vibrant, colourful, stylized aesthetic the game once held. Comparing some of the assets you see in the game shows there's a clear stylistic difference, and I would like to see a return to form. Even the clouds in the sky were bubbly and unique, and it's all just gone now. On a similar wavelength, that also applies to audio. There is a very distinct sound and atmosphere to the world which I think is missing today. Taking in the ambience of old Fortnite is aided by my new favourite earbuds, the Everyday Earbuds from Raycon. If you're also looking to listen to Butterbarn Hoedown for the 700th time since we all listen to Fortnite Lobby Tracks on Spotify, you can admit it, I'm not weird, you can do so with the newly upgraded model. They've added active noise cancellation so I can block out everything else and just listen to the beauty of oh, the game. Yeah, they are half the price of my previous brand of earbuds and they have a whopping 32 hour battery life. Life. That's roughly 87 matches of Fortnite Battle Royale. Hey, you can even wear them when you do the unthinkable and go outside to touch grass. I like to walk amongst the beautiful nature of my world while listening to music, and the upgraded everyday earbuds are perfect for that. It's no salty springs, but it's pretty good. If you want to touch grass too, you can get 15% off your order when you go to buyraycon.com forward slash jackus plus free shipping. Now back to the video. In terms of actual gameplay, the weapon variety feels so much bigger than it is today. These are all the additions of Season 7 alone, on top of a huge vault built up over the previous six. Same goes for Season 4. They only vaulted a few items per season, so every match felt more varied because you had a larger pool of items to draw from. Since Chapter 3, most of the weapons from each season are vaulted immediately after it ends, resulting in a very small, self-contained loot pool. Epic should not be afraid to open up the sandbox a bit and have more than two or three of each weapon class. 
I think the way Epic actually designed their main point of interest has fundamentally changed too. There's been a real shift away from small towns with distinctive buildings to these sprawling complexes where you can't really tell anything apart. Compare Pleasant Park to Pleasant Piazza, two entirely different POIs that share a prefix, but with the former you can easily identify each house. In fact, they all have their own names. With the latter, this simply isn't the case, and I say this as someone who genuinely enjoys dropping at Piazza. There's also been a bigger focus on one building POIs ever since the Agency. Again, you get this massive building that isn't particularly fun to loot because it's too much of a maze and ends up forgettable. There is a reason that I chose the POIs that I chose for the Chapter 5 side of those drops, and both of them were immediately obliterated, so... That's nice. The same goes for landmarks. The first and second maps had a whole lot of these interesting unnamed locations that you could land at when you wanted a slightly quieter game. Places like Chairtown or Container Yard are just as well liked as some of those larger locations, but you really don't see these anymore. Sure, there may be a house or two or a windmill, but what the newer maps really miss is those smaller spots with character. I think the real push towards themed maps since Chapter 4, like how Chapter 5 is mostly European and Chapter 4 is mostly medieval, has kind of impacted the quality of the POIs being produced. The way Epic handles new seasons has also changed with time. Back in Chapter 1, each season had a varying amount of launch changes but felt like an evolution of the previous. Yes, there were quite a lot of changes between Seasons 4 and 7, but you could still tell it was the same game. The loot pool changes were usually quite minimal, with content spread out over the coming weeks. Since Chapter 4, this strategy has shifted to one of having a massive launch, usually bringing a giant new biome with a bunch of very samey POIs, and then little content over the next three months. With seasons now being longer than they were, they again all end up feeling very self-contained. Compare Chapter 4 Season 2 to its immediate successor. You have these two extremely contrasting seasons with really very little carryover. And again, this applies to chapters too. Every new chapter must have a brand new map, a brand new art style and a brand new loot pool, and it has to be every year. There's no time to get attached. But yeah, that's about it. A peer yap session that was, but I wanted to really think about the way the game has changed over the years and how I feel about it. So what do I think? Well, my thoughts aren't all positive. There are some great parts about the state of Fortnite today. The quality of life changes were a big one for me, being able to have specific weapons go into specific slots, or having visualised audio or edit on release. All the great features. Not to mention all the new movement changes in Chapter 3 I think were fantastic, and, and I'm not trying to say I dislike the idea of the game changing either. I adored Chapter 2 in its entirety. Chapter 3 didn't quite hit for me, but I could see its strengths, and the first season of Chapter 4 felt like a real promising fresh start for me. But since 2023, the game has just gone in a direction that I kinda wish it hadn't. But it will always be changing, so there's every chance that in another year or two, it will be something for me again. In its current state, it generally isn't my cup of tea. I enjoyed the return to form for Season OG, and I had fun in the Wrecked season, there's still fun to be had in modern Fortnite, there's no doubt about that. They still know how to make a great game, it's just… not my great game anymore. But that's the beauty of a game that always changes like this one. There will inevitably be something for everyone, just so long as you're willing to wait it out. And there will someday be something for me again, as long as there's no Moisty Mire in it. Jesus, that place sucked.